This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1219 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by Clarion Hotel Lexington. Horse folks, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip features Coachman David Saunders, Robert Longstaff, and Tristan Aldrich, who are joined by driving radio show host Glenn the Geek, and each of them give their take on how they add a new horse to a team and the importance of getting to know a horse in order to assess his or her potential, regardless of whether it's for driving, eventing, or even trail riding. And we'll get right to our tip after this from the Clarion Hotel, Lexington. If you're coming to to Kentucky Horse Park for the Rolex or any other event, the best way to complete your Rolex experience is to stay at the nearby Clarion Hotel, just four miles from the horse park. At the Clarion Hotel, your experience will include a great room featuring a Tempur-Pedic memory foam bed, flat screen TV, and in the morning, a full free hot breakfast with eggs, sausage, waffles, and other great breakfast items. The Clarion is a full service hotel with easy access off of I-75 at exit 115 with plenty of parking for your truck and trailer. The Clarion Hotel is also pet friendly, so you can always bring along your furry friends. Best of all, you don't have to leave the hotel to enjoy fantastic Kentucky-style food and drink. Cortland's Southern Kitchen offers innovative Southern fare and a casual atmosphere or you can relax at the Sports Page Bourbon Bar and Grill, where you can give the bourbon sampler a try. It's a great way for you and your friends to discover which Kentucky spirit is your favorite. If you're coming to Rolex, you better get your reservation in early. 859-233-0512. That's 859-233-0512. Okay, next question is from Chantel, who's from Pennsylvania, a listener since we started, I think. She said, how do they put the team together? How difficult it is? How difficult is it to put teams together for owners, assuming that the owners drive? And David, you just went through this, actually. Uh, you just got two new horses, and we're over shopping. So I think the question is, how can you tell if horses are going to fit in a team? You already started putting the team together. How do you, how do you know if the new ones are going to work? Well, again, let's let's start again with Bob. And uh, yeah. what do you think, Bob? Because um, hmm. you're bringing in horses, but but you're sticking yeah. with the same breed with Hackney. So you kind of yeah. you vet them before um, uh, Frolic ever gets to them. So just tell us a bit yeah. about your process. Some, some we some we do, some we don't. Um, hmm. Well, first, I would think we have certain criteria. We don't want any horses bigger than 15-2 because of this small three-quarter size coach we have. And the leaders are 15 hands. So you have to get horses that, A, they've got to be bay. Then they've got to match those two heights, 15-2 for a wheeler and 15 hands for a leader. And temperament is the most important thing. And um, that, that's half your battle right there. But uh, generally look for horses with a a nice stride that will match in, blend in with the other horses to make a transition easier. But there's a lot of work that does go into it, as um, David and Tristan know, with, uh, you know, you try them out as a single, see how they go, find out what their quirks are, anything, any problems that need to be corrected. It takes time. It's not something you just rush into and do willy-nilly. So um, once you get them going nicely as a single, if they fit in with all your requirements, as a single, then you try them as a pair, and then you train them as a pair, and put the hours and miles in doing that. And then um, at a certain point, you come to a decision to put them in the team and try them out. So um, we do it all done very quietly and very slowly. So there's no no rushing. So that's well, what that's, we usually that's, do. That's that's great, Bob. Um, what about you, Tristan? What, give us some of your words of wisdom. Uh, I've been very fortunate. The last group of ho- the all the horses that I've brought in to where I am now, I've managed to be able to go and see and to drive previously before we've committed to anything that we've bought. Um, you kind of see what they're doing at the time. You look into, you can't you sit and have a look. You know what you're looking for. 
you look for a, a temperament, um, how they react to different situations when you're there driving. Um, I like to take them off the owner and drive them myself because, you know, the owner will know the quirks and quick and stuff with the horses. So I'd like to drive it myself before we commit to anything buying. Um, once the once we get them home, uh, it, it is a little bit of, you know, single and pair work, but, you know, having known and seen them where we where we purchased them from we uh kind of just assess as you're going it that there's a certain point where the horse you realize the horse is moving on and moving on quite nicely so you just we've just taken the plunge and said okay today's the day we'll put them in the team and it's not a planned thing it's not a set time you have to do this you have to do that it's I've just kind of assessed where the horse is and said, okay, today's a good day. Let's have, let's give it a go and, and see how it happens. And so touch wood, uh, every, they've always been really good. The last two we've brought in have been absolutely fantastic. We, we were down here about a week, I think. The horses had been locked up at home because they're getting ready to come to Florida and the cold and the rain. And one of the leaders had ripped a shoe off in the field running around like an idiot because he hadn't been out for a while. So, you know, the baby had gone well the day before. So, I'm, okay, let's stick him in the lead. You know, you just could see that he was he was going nicely. And, you know, away he went as if he'd always been there. So, it was, you know, it's just, it's timing and being able to read your animal, for me at least, anyway. Well, that's interesting. Um, my take on that would be a good horse is rather like a good woman. You have to either own them and or live with them for a while before you know what they're like. Um, and, and, and Bob, you know this as well. You know, sometimes uh, you, you think you've got the best horse. And so you, same with you, yep. Tristan. You know, you, you think you've got a great horse. And then suddenly when you have it for a while, it doesn't really quite work out. Um, the, the interesting thing is we're talking about three completely different breeds of horses. Bob's talking about hackneys, which he's dealing with for his uh, vintage late driver, a uh, gentleman driver. Um, Tristan is talking about a German warm blood. And of course, as you all know, Gloria Austin and, and I have these um, Spanish horses, these PRE horses. Um, talking about the PRE horses, the Spanish horses, what I like about them is that they are, they're very quick on the uptake. And uh, f for me, if you show them maximum twice, they kind of get it. Um but just like the others said, you know, you've really got to try and test them as much as possible. But you never, never, never really know them until you've had them a while. And uh, we've just brought over these two <coughs> four-year-olds that we bought last February. They're actually five, I think, in April. Um, and they stayed in Spain to be castrated and taught to ride. And um, we wanted to bring them home. Gloria said, bring them home because we need to make them ours. We'd been over there driving them quite a while in pairs. And we'd, I drove them in the glorious diamond at sea cab in front of 10,000 people, but we needed them to be with our horses and be in our environment and be with our regimen of, of, of working the horses. And, you know, Bob and Tristan, we all do fundamentally the same thing, same way we put to and, take horses out and harness and unharness, but everybody does it in a, a subtle, different way. And the horses have to kind of get used to how you're doing it. And um, it, 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 it is a process and it doesn't always work out. And I'm sure we've all had horses that haven't worked out, but uh, generally we like to think we can make it work. That's the same as uh, riders. You never know when you buy the horse, if it's going to work out for you for what you want to accomplish with that horse. Exactly. So, huh? Same thing. Except that you're putting multiples of them together. That, that is a big difference. Well, that, that, well, but that's the other thing that riding people don't often, or even single drivers don't get up, get, get the message with, is ours have to mix in. We normally have four of, uh, you've got 10 horses, I think, now. I have, I have seven for the team and three retirees. So, like David's trying to say, that they all have to rotate. You know, you can't, if you stick with the same four in the same positions, everyone gets a little stagnant after a while. And if you have something go wrong, if you have an issue and you need to swap out, then you it's like introducing a new horse. So all the horses that we have rotate through all positions um, and with different horses next to them because you they have to learn to to go with everyone. You know, it's it's no good getting to a show or a coaching event and someone's kicked someone in the trailer and you're like, oh, now what do I do? I can't put that horse there because they don't like each other or it's never gone there. It's You just have to, you know, they have to go and they have to do their job. 
And of course, the other thing is just changing one horse, you'd think it's only 25% of the team. It doesn't matter. But it it really, Glenn, it adds a whole different dynamic. Um, And I think Bob will agree with this. You know, you you change a a leader out and suddenly one's a little bit more aggressive or a little bit slower. So the whole team, the whole four in hand changes if you just change one horse. And of course, our job is to make that change as negligible as possible because we're not driving ourselves. We have owners that drive as a private coachman. We have to make sure that our principals uh, are happy with the drive. So there's always going to be a change when you change a horse or you bring a different horse in or you change a horse from the lead to the wheel. Um, But we, our job, which is really quite difficult a lot of the time, is to make that as negligible as possible. Well, there you have it. You can find links to today's guest as well as a lot of more tips at horsetipdaily.com. Make sure to have all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go by downloading the free Horse Radio Network app for your iPhone or Android. Go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. You can also subscribe via iTunes. This is Coach Jen, and I'll be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. 